Three, two, one. We decided to go across the country and find the most resilient entrepreneurs who strive to continue to succeed and disrupt every industry that they are in. From some great people. This is my work. That's we right. created this show. Why not you? To bring you closer to the minds of these disruptors. To motivate, <laughs> educate, and inspire you to become a disruptor in your own life. So welcome to the Disruptor Network. Season 2. Our next guest comes from our hometown, New York City. After a really successful career on Wall Street, Craig decided to leave that business and rewrite his own story and his own mental mindset on what to do with life. He created a really successful podcast and community called The CLS Movement. He's changing lives now, not just his own. Now here he is, Craig Siegel. To be honest with you, I didn't have that much motivation when I was younger, like with athletics. Like I like to watch sports, but I wasn't a huge athlete. I played Little League, played basketball, I played soccer when I was a kid. But none of that really lit a, a huge fire in me until after college when I started studying personal development. And then I realized I can actually change my entire map of the world in perspective and what I'm capable of. And then I started getting much more competitive in everything. Business, relationships, started to work on myself. And then when I got into running, it wasn't necessarily about running. I was just so fascinated with the fact that running to me is all mental and it's a metaphor for life, right? Because anyone can put one foot in front of the other as long as they're physically able to. You just have to beat that voice in your head, right? Are you really tired or is it your perception of effort? Once I stumbled upon NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, understanding how to reprogram my brain and so forth, I just got super excited about everything. Yeah! Instagram Live, the debut episode of The Paradigm Shift. You can't hit a target that you can't see. That's why goals are so important. But it's never too late. Everyone has a story about reinvention. If you ask 100 people what NLP means to them, you'll probably get 100 different answers. I can only tell you what it means for me. When I started studying NLP, it provided a whole new arena where I can change my thoughts, I could reprogram my mind, I could change what I associate pain and pleasure to. Quick example on that, I didn't eat seafood for 30 years. I started going out to all these networking events. I realized I don't hate seafood, that's just a thought that created a belief. And I changed that, now one of my favorite dishes is sushi. Literally 30 years of conditioning changed overnight. So for me, it was the ability to reprogram my mind. Once you become unplugged and you look at things from a different perspective, you can literally change, implement new strategies, just like a computer program. And you can change how you see the world. The biggest secret to life is understanding that whatever you're feeling is feedback from the universe about what your thoughts are. Because thoughts are random, thinking is not. So most people over the course of the day receive numerous and abundance of negative thoughts. Bang, 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 bang. Once you become aware of that, you have the ability to go in, remove those disempowering thoughts. They can intrude in your house and get the hell out of here and implement and replace them with more empowering and productive and constructive thoughts. Those thoughts then change your beliefs. What's possible for me? What can we do in this world? What kind of dent can we put in this universe? That changes your habits and behaviors. Ultimately, that changes the results. Something that I didn't know forever and most people don't. It all starts with your thoughts you have the ability to replace them with more empowering ones, which will change everything for you. We need to break the wheel. This life, we don't get to do this forever. You should feel very blessed and fortunate that you get to wake up every single day. Now, whether or not you want to achieve absolute greatness, if you want to leave a legacy, you want to do something significant, every day you wake up, if you should be so fortunate, the clock is ticking. We have a small window to do something absolutely unbelievable and leave an impact on this world. Break the wheel. Now we have new beliefs, new behaviors, new results. Look yourself in the mirror and say, why not you? Why not you? Because if it's not you, it's gonna be somebody else. If you don't disrupt, if you don't innovate, if you don't reinvent yourself, somebody else is gonna do it. 
Guys, there's space for all of us. I say that to anybody who has a dream or has some sort of ambition, but they're scared. Why me? Imposter syndrome. Who's going to listen to me? Why not you? Give me one good reason as to why not you. There is none. If it's not you, it's going to be somebody else. And once you understand that, you can start taking action and put together a strategy. I'm very strategic about every single thing I do, every single post that I make, every single thing that I eat, every single activity that I do. Paid for, non paid for, whatever the case may be. I'm gonna lose the habits that do not serve me. We're not gonna get very far if we don't have confidence. We must be worthy. We must sell I need new tactics, new strategies, a new mindset. I love you, man. Control chaos. And for example, I had a, a guest, Dr. Mike Chavez, on my podcast a while back. He's the sports psychologist for the NFL Seattle Seahawks. And we're talking about flow state. And I asked him straight up, I was like, how come all the greats, Tom Brady, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, how come they elevate their game when the, when the camera's on and the lights are bright? He's like, that's actually not true. Confidence is a skill. Being calm is a skill. Deep focus is a skill. Optimism is a trainable skill. If you don't have those skills in place, then as soon as you find yourself in a stressful environment, you don't like it. You know what they're looking for? Relief. Those guys are so aware and mindful in the big moments, they revert back to their training. Everyone else gets really nervous and actually gets lower. So they just stay status quo. So for me, I just revert back to my training. I like to be strategic with every single thing that I do. And that probably gives people anxiety, people that are like free spirits and like to go about the day to each their own. For me personally, I like to play life like chess. Always planning 10 moves ahead, always have a plan. Craig's grown his social media platform and his podcast and community from about 500 users to over a million. It's unbelievable. He has millions of downloads on his podcast and he did that in less than two years. If you've ever listened to Craig's podcast and or the Paradigm Shift on Saturday with David Meltzer or been part of one of his groups, you realize that his energy is off the charts. Every one of his high level guests always says the same thing. I've never heard somebody speak about me like that. And Craig always says the same. You wrote the story, I'm just telling it. But he makes people feel appreciated and in turn, it taps into a part of their brain that they need to get to other levels. He truly is a juggernaut in this field and you have to listen to hear his energy, but you feel it as soon as you see him. I say this very humbly, but when I put this whole vision together, look, if you're gonna think, you might as well just think big. So when I looked at what CLS will be, I looked at it as the apple of personal development, sleek, expensive, the top of the personal development space. Okay, well, what does that look like in a human form? It looks a little something like Tony Robbins, but bigger, right? A bigger podcast, the biggest on the planet, the biggest event speaking for a Wembley Stadium, 100,000 people, coaching, masterminds, my membership growing to a million people and so forth. And again, this is nothing to do with for Craig's wants or needs. CLS is much bigger than Craig Siegel will ever be. I acknowledge that. It's kind of like the bat signal to Gotham City. It's not really about Batman, but that symbol says that they're protected. In my head, I just wanna make an impact. I wanna help everybody revamp their mindset, understand that where they are is not where they're gonna be if they can change their perspective and make some adjustments. And legitimately, as corny as it sounds, I wanna make the world a better place. I wanna change the world. I want everybody to understand that they're limitless. Goals will keep a person alive when nothing else will. Goals generate desire. They give you enthusiasm. When you have goals, you wake up on fire for life because you have purpose and you're excited. When you want something really bad, if you have a goal or desire, what I learned, what works for me, is you put that out there into the universe, that intention, and then you let it go. And then you take the necessary steps there. Where I think most people get discouraged is they want something so bad that they're actually coming from a scarcity mindset because they're afraid not to have it. And the universe doesn't like that, doesn't respond in your favor. That's why people are always complaining about money. They want money so bad that their real intent is that they're so angry that they don't have it. They're scared not to have it. And that's why they live their whole life, like money problems, right? If you have a goal, you put it out there, and you release it. Put the intention out there as an electrical signal to the universe, and then you take the necessary steps, your beliefs, your habits, and so forth. And that's when real life manifestations begin to happen. When I shut down my office in the pandemic for what I thought would be two weeks on Wall Street, I came to the realization that I was miserable and that making money doesn't equal success. So when I figured out CLS by marrying my gift of communicating with my passion for personal development and I put together this whole vision, once I had the idea, there was no excuses. 
My biggest fear was not taking a shot at CLS and it not working. My biggest fear was going back, being miserable, not even being alive, just existing. So I'm motivated and I fear not living life to the fullest, not putting a dent in the universe, not leaving a legacy that my kids, 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 kids be proud of and really making an impact and helping a lot of people. My biggest fear is to not accomplish that and I'll do whatever it takes. And I think if people change the perspective on what they fear, it can change your life. Fear shouldn't hold us back, it should drive us. For example, with the marathon, if I succumbed to negative thoughts on mile 20, which everyone gets, even the professional runners, if I succumb to that, my beliefs would be like, all right, I'm just happy to be here. And then my habits would have been like, all right, let's just walk or lightly jog the rest of the way. And once I became aware that the opponent was sending me those thoughts, I changed them to empowering. I said, we're gonna PR and shock the world right now. We're gonna inspire a lot of people, especially my dad who's battling cancer and who's running it for. With that belief, then all of a sudden, I was doing those 30 second sprints every mile and the end result was a PR. So it all goes back to nurture and make sure you're feeding your mind with positive and empowering thoughts. Most people feel as though they're not worthy to put a dent in the universe, right? So instead of why not me, they have this why me mentality. And that stems from limiting beliefs. They have these beliefs in their head that they don't deserve to be successful or they don't have the experience or why should people listen to them? And that creates imposter syndrome. Look yourself in the mirror and say three words. Why not you? Because it's not you, it's gonna be someone else. Once you understand that, you put together some strategies, change your thoughts to empowering ones, there is literally nothing that we can't accomplish. Both of these individuals completely redesigned their lives using the power of the mind and even exceeded their own expectations. Our next episode is our season finale as we bring some of the greatest speakers on earth to come speak at our Decoding the Disruptors conference. Craig will be joining the stage with living legends like Kevin Harrington, the original shark from Shark Tank, Dottie Herman, a real estate legend, and Brad Lee, a marketing guru, and many more. This season finale is something you don't want to miss. We see you guys there. I've been all in my bag. You been all in my business. You be all in your feelings. I've been all in them trenches. I've been all in my bag. You be all in my business. No, they notice me flexing. Fit in all in my fitness. I've been all in my bag. You been all in my business, you be all in your feelings, I been all in them trenches, I been all in my bag, you be all in my business.